Why don't you greet your neighbor, your left and right, and just give them your best smile, fist bump, shake hands, whatever you're comfortable. You know, don't be a stranger in the house of God. Amen? It's good to be in the house of God. It's good to see you all. All right, let's get our Bible ready. We're going to learn the Word of God this morning. Amen? All right. So I want to share with you about something that is close to my heart, um, and I want to take you into a journey, because I know I'm not alone in this, and I'm, I'm taking you with me. And I want to share with you about courage this morning, and the title of my sermon is Courageous, and it's taken from the passage of a life of a leader in Israelites uh, called Joshua, so Courageous. So let's open our Bible together in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people to the land which I am going, I'm giving to them, the children of Israel, Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. From the wilderness on this, and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and the, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you, and I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to, to their father to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it in a day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Whoever, verse 18, whoever rebel against your command and does not heed your words, in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage courage. Amen. So this is a message that was given uh, by God to a new leader that is rising up in the chain of leadership among the Israelites. Uh, this young, well, considered young, even though it's not young maybe to our, uh, our time. Joshua is arising. Joshua has been a longtime protege and also uh, a disciple of this great leader named Moses. So when he uh, took the position, God gave, God gave him this, this uh, passage of uh, encouragement, a charge and also an encouragement. And you can see here it was being repeated, be strong and courageous, be strong and of good courage, be strong and of good courage. And actually, it was not just right here that God spoke to him about this, but before the transition of power, if we go back a little bit, let's go back to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 31, we're not going to read the whole thing, but just put it on your note. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 1 to 7, if, when you begin to read the, the first one, you will see that Moses have received the final verdict from the Lord. God was telling him, Moses, you are not it. You're not the one that's going to lead this people across the Jordan into the promised land. But your protege, your leader, uh, uh, Joshua, is going to lead this people. So Moses conveyed this message to them, uh, to the people, to the Israelites, and also he spoke directly to Joshua, his protege, his disciple. You know, it's been like a son to Moses and always by his side wherever Moses goes, wherever he went. So verse 6, Moses says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. 
For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. This is the word from a father to a son. Be strong and of good courage. And then verse 7, Moses called Joshua and said to him, In the sight of all Israel. So apparently the first, it was a personal audience. It was a personal one-to-one session. Son, be strong and of good courage. And then he repeated that again. He said the same thing to Joshua, this time in front of all the subject of his leadership, which is the people. And he says, when in, in the private, he says, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of the people. Because if you've known the history, you've known the trajectory of the Israelites, you know, they are quite a ruckus, you know. So Moses called Joshua and said, him, said to him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. For you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. And then the third time again in verse 23, when he inaugurated Joshua, the son of Nun, he said, Be strong and of good courage, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land of which I swore to them. Be strong and of good courage. So I want to dwell on verse 9 of Joshua 1. And it says, Have I not commanded you? Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, it's as if God and Moses was playing trick or having fun, you know. Sometimes when we gather, you know, we families, you know, uh, in our care cell, we talk a lot of things, and we, we, we cover all, all topics from A to Z. And sometimes we would joke on each other, and we would repeat a subject again and again, you know, just like this, you know, uh, be strong and of good courage. Oh, by the way, you know, be strong and of good courage. You know, and we, we would repeat it again and again, you know. It's as if God was doing this, but the sole intention is to capture the attention of this young leader, Joshua. You know, Joshua is a type of Christ. You know, Joshua is, in the Old Testament, is a type of Christ. And, and, and this, is, this is a very powerful leader, you know. But when he arose to the leadership, it is not without burden. It is not without challenge. It is not without great opposition. And the greatest opposition is not spiritual, the devil, or, or any other. But it was the people that he is about to lead. So that's why his spiritual father, Moses, was so aware of this. And he says, son... Be strong and of good courage. Henry, you repeat that three times. Personally, in front of the people, and ceremonially when he inaugurated Joshua. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be very strong and very courageous. Be strong and of good courage. And this is repeated to Joshua seven times. Seven times. You know, I mean, (laughs) you know, Growing up with kids, many times our kids would say, Dad, you said that like 2,000 times already. <laughs> you know, but apparently we take our cues from the Lord. So he said to Joshua seven times. First, from his spiritual father, his covering, his mentor. And then God said it directly to him in his office, in his capacity as he was becoming a leader. You know, I learned a good principle here. You know, um, the Bible is very, uh, has, a, has a pattern in everything. God has a pattern in everything He does. So I want to encourage you, as you are growing up in whatever capacity, find a good mentor. Find a good father-like figure that can be a cover to you. And I would encourage you strongly, find a spiritual father. Because Joshua would not rise to the strong leadership, to the strong leader that he is, Without the discipleship, without the covering, without the mentoring of a spiritual father. And it was very important that the same word that God speak to him directly was first spoken to his spiritual father. I want to encourage you, you know, uh, um, don't, don't be alone in this world. Uh, majority of you here are, are younger generation. Uh, what alphabet are we? Generation Z or X or K or L? I don't know. So... But majority of you are younger than me, a lot younger. I want to encourage you, don't go and try to figure things out alone. If you seek, you will find. And God will give you 
uh, the mentor that, you, that can help you, that can say the right thing and say it at the right time when you needed it the most. And Joshua needed it the most at this time because a great things are about to happen. Something that, 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 that changed not only his life, but changed the whole dynamic of Israelites. So it says, be strong and of good courage. I want to bring your, to your attention the significance of when it was being said. So when God and Moses said, be strong and of good courage, you have to understand that it is said in the middle of a great shift and transition, and even before the great shift and, 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 and a great transition. We know that Moses had been leading the Israelites from, um, from Egypt uh, and then all the way crossing the Red Sea. And this is the nearest that they have ever been to the promised land. But sadly, because of Moses' you know, lack of judgment, God says, that's not you. You're not the one. He made a mistake and God says, um, Moses, um, you, you, your time is up. It's time for the new leadership to arise. So... This is said in the middle of a great shift and transition. And what is interesting is that it says in verse 1, Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, it says, after the death of Moses, after the death of Moses. I want you to understand that sometimes God would allow a necessary ending to usher in a new beginning. God would allow something that maybe you enjoy very much to end. Because it's time for him to start something new. And we all know that God is in charge of such things, you know. I mean, so I don't know who will need to hear this, but I know this is something that needs to be spoken. When I'm praying, preparing for this message, I know this is a message that gets to be, that needs to be preached. Because a lot of us are right now weary. A lot of us maybe are discouraged because of the season that we are in, and it's not ideal to our expectation. Maybe it's even disappointing to us because it is not as we expected it. Maybe it is disheartening to us because we don't like it. We don't like I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty much just like everyone else here. You know, what happens right now, I don't really like it, you know. What happens in politics, in culture, in so many things, I don't really like it. But I am, I, 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 I have this, at least this, this, this enough understanding to know that I'm not in charge. God is in charge of, of what's going on in this, in, this, in, this, in this season, you know. In the Old Testament, it says that he elect king and he dethrone kings. I'm not in charge. But if he were to orchestrate his will, his purpose, his agenda, I'm also mindful that he can use any element. Even element that is to us not ideal. Even things that to us is, hmm, God, you know, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Well, that's the thing. We're not him. We're not him. We didn't know what he knows. And we don't have the power that he has. If, if the Bible says that he can turn what the devil meant for evil and turn it around for good, then we should at least take comfort in understanding that God knows what he's doing. But unfortunately, sometimes God would allow a necessary ending to something that we like that, and, and, and something that we hold on so tight in our life. But his purpose is so that we enter in, into a new season. We enter in, into the new dimension. We enter in, into a new beginning. Maybe there are some of you who are in the middle of this. That's why you need to hear the encouragement, the exhortation that Moses and God spoke to Joshua. Be strong. And have good courage. Be strong and have good courage. Because the things that ends, don't dwell in the past. But just believe that our Father knows best. And he, he, he knows where He's taking you. He knows what He's going to birth within our life. So don't hold so tight into what we have right now. But hold in surrender. If God gave it, praise God. But our faith is not on the gift, but on the source, on the giver. The career that you have, you know, the opportunity that you are in right now, it's like a server. You are riding on high wave right now. But know that pretty soon, that wave will die down. And a new wave is forming. If you are a server and you got hung up to just one wave, 
then that will be pretty much your day, just riding. And you go home and people ask, did you catch a good ride? Uh, yeah, just one. Well, because you get so hung up with just one wave. But the truth in the sea is that wave keeps on forming and coming and forming and coming. That's the truth about life. God would sometimes interrupt our fun because he's got bigger things in our life. The sooner we realize that, the faster we will grow, the faster we will become mature, and the faster we will see the fulfillment of his promise. Here's the thing that we also need to take into account of how many times a shift or change will happen to us. You know, when Moses was taken out of the equation, when Moses, when God says, Moses, your time is up. It's time for me to disciple a new leader. It's time for a new leader to rise up. You know, the Bible wrote that in Deuteronomy 34, verse 7, it says that Moses was 120 years old. And it's old in our standard now. But back in the day, people get to live like 900, you know, like 800 years old. You know, 120 is pretty much a toddler. You're still in daycare probably. You know, I don't know. <laughs> But Moses was 120 years old. Deuteronomy verse 34, 34, verse 7. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyesight was clear and he was as strong as ever. So you need to understand, sometimes when God were to cause a shift to take place, it could happen in a situation where all is still good. Lord, why change it? Why change it? He's still strong. His eyes still 20-20, maybe 25-25. I don't know. You know, but it's, it's not those things that gets to determine when or where or how. God in his sovereignty has put in place a plan that is bigger. So we in our limitation, we grow enamored to some things, to things, to person, to season, to smell, to color, or to certain number or to certain accomplishment. Lord, why change it? Don't change it. You know, I mean, as a pastor, I I can't tell you how many times a counseling session would start, Pastor, can you help me? I'm struggling with, you know, I think God is not fair. Uh, I don't know why he would mess up things, mess things up. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I had it planned out so well, so carefully, meticulously. And then he messed it up. I usually begin with a line of question that goes something like this. Well, who... Who's God again? <laughs> are you or him? Are you God or are you, is he God? If, he, if you call him God, would you trust him enough to know that he knows best? He knows better than you. Maybe a little bit better, but at least better than what you know. But that's the problem. To trust him as God would require you to surrender. And that's the S word that we all hate it. Because we all are obsessed with control. When Moses was given a time's up, he's still healthy as ever. Things are still good. But nevertheless, God says, Moses, it's time. It's Joshua's time. You know, Joshua wouldn't made it as good as he was had it not been for Moses who had planted down the seed and prepared him the best of his ability and experience. So we all stand on somebody else's shoulder, as good as we are. We're all standing on somebody else's shoulder. Joshua stood on Moses' shoulder. Shoulder, (laughs) you know. So, but then again, God says, your time's up. So, Rejoice by all means on the accomplishment that you have right now. And cherish every moment by all accounts. But don't let your heart settle there. In fact, I want to ask you this simple question. Are you ready for what's coming next? Not because you're not satisfied to what you have right now, but because your heart is not attached to what you have right now. But your heart is so fixed on the God who's in charge. You know, sometimes that's the truth. And in Joshua's case, you know. And many scholars would believe that Joshua is the type of leaders who's into 
leadership, who's vying out for that position. You know, many people would want to be in the leadership of the, of the soldiers, you know, because kings are known to arise from military traits, you know, or, or maybe the prime minister, political leaders. But Joshua, if you study his life, you would find that Joshua takes delight in serving God through serving the man of God. So that's his passion. He's always next to where Moses is. He's always, wherever Moses goes, that's where he was. When Moses was on top of Mount Sinai, he's at the feet of Mount Sinai waiting for him. You know? So this is, this is somebody who has no ambition, maybe, to, to climb the corporate ladder. His heart is on the right place. And that's why exactly God was saying, you know, be strong and of good courage. You know, many of us who gets to be where we are, we're actually unqualified if we were to be measured by the standard of the culture of today's organization or management. We're not qualified. But God in his sovereignty has deemed it fit for us to be there. I'm one of them. It's not because of me. It's not because of my ambition, but God in his sovereignty. And then in Joshua chapter 2, verse 1, uh, uh, sorry, Joshua chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Notice, sometimes God will orchestrate a removal of security to raise a new authority. And this is the thing. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. God for, for the longest time, Moses is Joshua's security. It's, I mean, it's, I mean, in, in my journey of leadership and ministry, I, my, my biggest call is help ministry, you know. So whatever my pastor says, you know, what's the vision of the church, I help fulfill it. I'll help serve whatever is necessary. And you know what? I do it to the best, of my ability. I can make them look better. I can make it happen. But see, that's the thing, you know. It's my comfort. I don't have to set goals. I don't have to, you know, set the vision. I don't have to be the man when something is wrong. I'm not the one to take blame, you know. And to a certain degree, that has become my shield, my security, you know. Sometimes for God, to grow us to the next level of our leadership. And you know what? I want to generalize this today for all of us, this morning in this place. And I want to say that every single one of us is a leader. We are leaders. Is that okay? We're leaders. At least we lead ourselves. So when I say leaders, I'm not talking about the one who's standing here or, you know, leading people. I'm talking about you. Come on, say it. He's talking about me. Come on, say it. Come on, turn to somebody and say, he's talking about me. Come on, would you have faith enough to say, I'm a leader? Come on, say it. Let me hear you say, I'm a leader. So this message is about you. When the word says, be strong and be of good courage, it's talking to you. It's talking to you. All right? Let's personalize this. This way you get the most out of this message. So many times God would ordain a shift. He would orchestrate events, time, place. Things to happen because he wants to move your security. And because when we are still hung up on a security that is lower than God, and we won't raise to the level of authority that he ordained us to be. We won't raise to the leadership, to the level of leadership that he destined us to be. Because we're still attached to things, to person, to things that are in vain instead of attaching ourselves to the living God. And God would remove that. So maybe things are happening, start happening in your life because God wants to ordain you into a new level of authority, but you're still hung up to the security that you hold on so dear to your life. For Joshua, it was Moses. You know. But now, Joshua has got to make a decision. He's got to say to the people, turn left, turn right. He's got to say to the people, cross this Jordan. He's got to say to these people, stay here. The buck stops right here. 
But right there in that vulnerability of leadership, he found a new security. And his security is not in himself or other people, but in, it's in God. So when Moses and God says, be strong and of good courage, I, I take it that this is said to anticipate a great opposition despite a great opportunity. So, there's a great opposition here. He says, don't be afraid of these people. And actually, he says, be strong and good courage. You must arise and cross this Jordan. So, the Jordan that they must cross at the time. You know, in a normal season, Jordan is but a small river. It's not too big. And it's quite manageable to be crossed. But at the time that mandate was given, it was early spring. It was time of monsoon at that time. And Jordan swelled to become like about one mile wide with a strong current. So new leadership having to take a new mandate in a unfavorable weather, unfavorable element, unfavorable condition. God is saying, arise. But God wants you to see the great opportunity, not the great opposition that you will have. That's why he says, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. I mean, seven times it was says, I think by now we have to realize that he would not want us to be anything less than strong and courageous. Hello? Now to illustrate it to you clearer, you know, I, I find myself asking this question. What is actually the opposite of courage? Anybody know? What's the opposite of courage? If you say it's fear, it's actually not correct. The opposite of courage is not fear, but the opposite of courage is discouragement. Discourage. It's discourage. And you know what? It sounds so simple. It sounds so, you know, duh, pastor, I know that, but I'm not playing words here. I want to bring about to you something that has been overlooked but actually very deadly and has been known to stop the trajectory of even the brightest and strongest and most resourceful leader in the Bible times and in our times. Listen to me. Because we're all leaders, I'm going to give you this important word. If as a leader, you're not skilled you don't have what it takes to handle discouragement. Let me tell you, you won't go far. You won't go far. Not in the ministry, not in your career, not anywhere. You won't be able to relate to other people well. You won't be able to do anything straight. You won't be able to be maximized in your capacity because of this one single thing called discouragement. No wonder it was repeated seven times to a young leader. Be strong. And of good courage. Be strong and courageous. You need courage to become just a believer. You need courage to become a husband. You need courage to become a father. You need courage to become a wife. You need courage to become a mother. You need courage to become a son, to become a daughter. You need courage to become anything in this life. And when this courage sets in your life and pits its ten on your heart, and you're not able to shake it off? You need to understand this curseman is not an orphan. He's got so many siblings. You better believe it is going to bring all his family into your life. You know. So when leaders are discouraged, they are bound to make wrong assessment of everything in life. They're bound to make wrong assessment. Their assessments are off because the parameter, because inside it's all off. Imagine a compass. It will say a true north. But when you put a magnet close to it, it's like a discouragement. So north no longer becomes north now. Because there's that small external element called discouragement. Moses in number 11, 14, 15, because of discouragement, this is what's going to happen here are wrong things, wrong assessment people will make, leaders will make when they're discouraged. Moses prayed the wrong answer, the wrong, the wrong prayers. You know, when, when the people were going against him, 
You know, when the people have been complaining and judged the Lord, Moses was so discouraged and he prayed to God, Lord, just kill me. <laughs> what kind of prayer is that? You pray to the giver of life to take your life. Uh, wait, I'm the one who gave it to you. Why would you want a refund? But that's what he prayed. Why? Is it because he's not bright? Is it because he doesn't have what it takes? Is it because he doesn't have experience? Is it because he doesn't have the degree or knowledge? No, simply because he's discouraged. He prayed the wrong prayer. When people are discouraged, they will say the wrong thing. You know, the Israelites, when they're discouraged, oh, all mana, 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 every morning mana, croissant every day. I want croque le monsieur or something, you know. I want meat. And then because of their discouragement, they speak against God and they speak against Moses. When you're discouraged, your word are not right. Hello? When you're discouraged, your words are not words. Many times they're knife. And that's what happened. The people spoke against God. The people spoke against Moses. And we say things when we are discouraged that we will regret later. But hear me. Hear me well. Many times the word that you say can never be traced back. Retra re cannot be retracted. So be careful when you are discouraged. Don't speak anything. The best way is for you to be quiet and be reflective. Hello? That's what happened. You know, when people are discouraged, they think wrong things. You remember John the Baptist? The guy who has the honor as a forerunner of Christ, the Savior, and the guy who, has the honor, who had the honor of baptizing Jesus and proclaiming him as a son of man, son, son of God, you know. But then again, when he was in prison, he grew disheartened. He became discouraged when he was in prison. And in Matthew chapter 11, verse 2 to 3, he began to send his messenger and ask. He began to question his very faith in Christ. He says, are you the Messiah or should we wait for somebody else? Jesus was like, oh, didn't you baptize me? <laughs> didn't you proclaim who I was? You were the one who says, I, you know, I, you, you're not even fit to open my sandals. You know, now you doubt me because of your hardship in life. Listen, even the brightest, even the holiest, even the most gifted are known to make such an erratic decision because they are in discouraged. I hope I get your attention by now. It's not a big boulder that's going to dethrone you. It's that small pebble called discouragement. No wonder God said it seven times to Joshua, be strong and of good courage. When you're discouraged, you begin to see wrong things. You know. The spies to Canaan that was sent to spot on the new promised land, they came back. Instead of seeing the opportunity, their eyes were on the opposition. So because of that, they begin to articulate their fear. It's one thing for you to internalize discouragement, but it's another thing when you articulate it because it becomes contagious. And not just you that are discouraged now, but you become the evangelist of discouragement to so many other people. He says, they says, we were in our sight just like grasshopper. We were like grasshopper. They were so big. They forgot how God split open the Red Seas. They forgot how croissant fall from heaven. They forgot how this, the ground was open. They forgot all the other miracles, and all they see is grasshopper. When you are discouraged, you begin to see the wrong things, and not necessarily the wrong things outside. But what is most problematical is that we begin to have a wrong perception about ourselves because we're discouraged. We don't see us in light of God's glorious plan, God's glorious order that you are. Remember, he says, you are created Wonderfully and fearfully. You're not made of some scraps left over what is left in heaven and then poof, come you, comes Daniel. Poof, oh, Peter. Well, if you're a scrap, I don't know what's a <laughs> masterpiece. 
you know. But you are wonderfully and fearfully made. When you're discouraged, you do wrong things. Moses made a mistake when he struck that rock. When you're discouraged, you end up in the wrong place. Hello. When you're discouraged, you end up in the wrong place. Jonah would end up in the belly of a whale. Abraham found himself down in Egypt. Hello. Elimelech and Naomi brought the whole family to Moab. Peter warmed himself by the fire, by the enemy's fire. <laughs> Thomas missed Sunday night church and missed seeing the resurrected of Christ because he was discouraged. When you're discouraged, you're going to venture out to a territory. Just like Star Wars, what, what is this? To a place <laughs> where no man has gone before. But you don't belong there. You go, you end up in the wrong place. When you're discouraged, you will develop the wrong spirit. That's what happened. The whole Israelites, they're discouraged because they don't get what they want. And as a, as a result, they start murmuring. They start grumbling. They start complaining. Listen, your will needs to be broken, but not your spirit. Your spirit needs to be strong. Your will needs to be broken into submission, but your spirit needs to be strong. So when leaders are discouraged, they are bound to make wrong assessment. Listen to this passage. The Bible says, verse 9, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, Have I not commanded you? So you need to know that this is not just a suggestion, but this is a command actually to Joshua, and this is a command to all of you who are leaders. You are all leaders. God commanded us to be strong and not courageous. Jesus himself says this. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I, I love what Billy Graham says. It's simple, but this is what he says. God never uses a discouraged Christian. He must change him first. And then use him. So if God doesn't use us, not because we're not fit for service, but because, you know, discouragement gets in the way. And God will deal with your discouragement first. Until he will use you to rise to the level that you are in. John chapter 16, verse 33. Listen to the passion, the passion translation. John 16, verse 33. It says, And everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you. This is, this is what Jesus says. Everything that I've taught you is so that the peace that is in me will be in you. And will give you, what? Great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrow. But you must be courageous. You must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. You must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. Maybe there are some of you who are saying, but pastor, this was in the Old Testament. This is a specific, spoken to Joshua on a specific occasion. Can I claim this? To be mine? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. You know, uh, there are three things that I can share with you why this is as much of a promise to us as it was to Joshua. First thing, you know, this exhortation to be strong and courageous actually have been broadened. It's quite general. And instead, it was said in the book of Isaiah 41, verse 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Take it. This is your cue. This is your exhortation. The second thing that gives you the right to claim this, to be your promise. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, you know, I love this. It says, for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him are amen to the glory of God through us. So all the promises of the Father are yes and amen through Christ. What gives us the right to claim the promise that is in here? Because Jesus. Because of Jesus. He become the connection. And also in Romans chapter 8 verse 32, it says, He who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The God who went through heaven and hell just to save us. For God so loved the world. The same God 
who would not spare anything for you and I. All expenses. You know, he will also freely give us all things. This is yours. This is mine. It's our charge. It's our exhortation. It's our commandment. One of the, a Christian leader wrote this. A large part of the battle in leadership is overcoming discouragement. Overcoming discouragement. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I know this is the message that you need to hear. Maybe you're in the middle of a transition that is not ideal for you. Maybe you're in the middle of a shift. Maybe you're in the middle of a season that you don't care, that you don't pray, you don't seek. Maybe your security is off. Maybe, I don't know, there's so many maybe. But let me tell you something. That if you trust in him, be strong, be courageous. I think God is going to lead you to that great opportunity, even in the midst of great opposition. God is going to shift a new beginning, even though it must go through necessary ending. Don't settle in discouragement. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That last part right there is your cue. So pastor, when we are discouraged, are we to be strong in the power of our will? Or you know, just like, oh, be strong, be strong. No, I'm strong, I'm strong. You know, just like willpower. No, actually no. That last part there gives you the key. When it says the Lord your God is with you wherever you go, it means that we are to be strong in the strength of the Lord. We are to trust in the strength of God to meet your need as you go to battle against the enemy. If you follow the book of Joshua, you see the kind of battle that Joshua had to fight. If you see the kind of needs that Joshua needs to handle, you see the kind of problem, you see the kind of challenges that he has to overcome, you'll realize that when God says, be strong and courageous, I mean, it's not, it doesn't stop right there where he says, I will go with you wherever you go. And because I will be with you wherever you go, that's why you will be strong and be courageous. It's not just positive mental attitude. It's not just a discipline of the thought. It's not just a willpower. It's not because so many of positive mental reinforcement book that you read. But it's because you know. Because So basic line is, this is a call to faith. And your faith is not in you. Your faith is not in the fact that all things being equal, circumstances being stable, you get what you like, or you're in a place where you are gifted, where you have the experience, but because of the God who placed you in that circumstances, who placed you in that season, who placed you, who planted you in that path. Be strong and courageous. Be strong in the strength of the Lord. And this is his commandment for all of us. Be strong and courageous. Amen, church. I pray that God, through his Holy Spirit, will touch you this morning. Just like the song we sing. Can I invite the music team to come to stage? It says, I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Because all I am is all you are. So if you are here this morning, you are in the midst of a transition, you are in the midst of shift, and you never prayed, you never won. In fact, you hated it. You loathe at it. This word's for you. Be strong and courageous. Maybe something that you really love has come to an end. Maybe something that you really dear has come to an end. Take heart. Because it means that God is ushering a new beginning. Maybe you protested to God, Lord, why change things? It's good as it was. Lord, why you did this? Why you did that? It's, th- it's still all, is still good. But would you just trust in His Lordship? Would you just trust that He's a good Father who knows how to give good gifts? I mean, don't get hung up with the circumstances. Don't get hung up with the season. But focus on His promises. Focus on who He is. 
Maybe your security was abruptly taken out of you. Maybe just like Joshua, it's your cue that God is going to raise you into your new level of authority. Whatever it is, though you are seeing great opposition, don't be fixated in the opposition, but look at the opportunity that God wants you to conquer. Not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? It's all I own. It's all you are. Will you meet me here? Would you stand with me and let's just sing this together? Not enough, Lord. Not enough. Won't you come and touch me, Lord? Won't you come and feel me again? Oh Lord, it's all I want. All I want. All I want is all you are, Lord. Will you meet me here again? Come on, let's ask Him to fill us again. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet? All I want, so all I want, it's all you are. Will you meet me here again? Not enough, Lord, not enough, unless you come. Will you meet me here again? all I want, it's all you are, will you meet me here again? Come on, let's sing it again, I'm not enough, Lord, I'm not enough, unless you come, will you meet me here again? That's all I it's all you are, will you meet me here again? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place, the Lord is in this place. Come Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place, the Lord is in this place. Would you open your heart right now? If you are in a position, if you are in a stage, in a season in a shift that is unfavorable to you if you're struggling with where you are right now you didn't ask for this you didn't pray for this i think the message is clear if you love him and you choose to follow him the message is clear let god be god let god be god in your life just trust him as for you be strong and have a good courage be strong and have a good courage not for a minute were you forsaken. Because He's always with you. He's always near you. He's in you. Father, we pray this morning that you will touch every single one of us. We know that it gets so lonely many times when we are in the place that you call us to be. 
There are those of you who probably are, feel like you're all alone. Well, pretty much a leader experienced this. The silence of isolation. But Lord, speak to us this morning and affirm in our hearts that not for a minute, oh God, were we forsaken or were we alone. We may feel lonely, but we're never alone, oh God. You're always with us. You're always with us. Your spirit is in us. Your word is near us. It's in us. So Holy Spirit, I pray this morning that you will encourage every single leader in this place, every single one of us. Encourage us. Empower us. Help us to receive this commandment. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and be of good courage because I'm with you. I am with you. I go where you go. I will not be far from you. Don't have your eyes set on the challenges. In this world, there will be problem. But as for you, be courageous. Be strong and good courage. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Holy Spirit, as I stop right here, I pray that your presence continue to invade within our heart. Tear down all those seeds of discouragement. Uproot all the seeds of fear, disappointment, discouragement, O oh God. Holy Spirit, teach us how to handle discouragement and help us to heed your commandment to be strong and be of good courage because we know that you are always with us and never left us. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Church, as you go home, go in peace. And receive the blessings from the Lord your God. And know that many times God allow you to have the struggle that you have. So that you can minister to those who have the same struggle. And as we receive this word, I charge you with this word. And as you go out and leave this place, be a messenger of peace. Be a messenger of courage. Be a messenger of grace. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. And may the favor of the Lord our God rest upon you and establish the work of your hands always, from now until the end of times. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy Sunday.